Una Emery just keeps doing his thing, Michael Lahoud. One nothing against Bayern Munich. Friend of the show, Arnaud Danjuma, opened the scoring, by the way. Uh, he believes he's one of the best wingers in the world. I'm not here to doubt that. I think he's fantastic. He got that goal. Bayern did, obviously, statistically, as the game went on, you know, uh, overwhelmed Villarreal, but Villarreal stood very firm. Alfonso Davis did make his return in this one. I was surprised he started in this yeah. one, but it doesn't matter. El Submarino Amarillo shuts down Bayern Munich. Thoughts on this game, Michael? I just want to start by saying good evening. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't mind I it, though. It. I couldn't help it. <laughs> oh, but when we were doing the preview show for this game, this was this in the Liverpool game, I thought about more less than the Liverpool match. But this game was definitely one of the trickier and trickiest ties and for a Bayern team coming off a 4-1 win, when I saw the lineup, I could not believe that Leon Goretzka was on the bench. When yeah, you I were saw singing that, his praises before this in our preview. And it, so, I, I was surprised. He scored a too, goal yeah. in his last match. Are you kidding me? Yeah. You, in the Champions League, I thought Nengelsmann, and, and it makes me wonder if Nengelsmann did not take this match seriously enough to put Maybe. out his strongest lineup. If you're going to put out Alfonso Davies, who's just come back from a long injury layoff, you got to put on Goretzka. Him and Kimmich, there's more balance to that. I thought he got it wrong with Musiala, and Musiala was involved in the goal. He did not follow his runner. Look at the players. for. Well, we're looking at Bayern, first of all. I thought their left-hand side was a problem for them. Alfonso Davies, as good as he is going forward and his recovery speed, he looked like a player who was trying really hard to make a stamp on the game. Yeah, it was his first game passes. back after a while, and you put him in oh. in, the, in a quarterfinal of a first leg. It's a little questionable. I, oh. I know that he's a tremendous athlete, but that's a lot to ask, Michael. I agree. Absolutely. And and when you look at that left-hand side, if Komen, Musiala, and Davies, and what I thought Villarreal did really well was they utilized Lo Celso. Lo Celso Mm. Hey, what he couldn't do at Tottenham, he is definitely doing at Villarreal. He's finding ways to impact the match. And yep. his run in behind, he plays it wide to Gerard Moreno, who Gerard Moreno, my word, what a player. <sighs> big, big striker. <laughs> But How about that like Neuer? Uh, he intercepts Neuer's like uh, attempted pass, and he yeah. almost does a ridiculous goal from beyond his own oh. half. Almost, almost. Moreno's a tremendous player. Amazing. What I thought was interesting, Michael, was when I'm looking at these stats, Bayern Munich, like I said, like they had 22 shots. Mm -hmm. But from that, only four on target, right? So you could see the philosophy there from Unai Emery. He's like, look, Bayern's going to come at us. That's fine. Just be organized, be compact. Here's the stat that really makes me think a little bit in terms of their pass accuracy, right? And Bayern clearly had way more passes than, um, than Villarreal. Bayern Munich's uh, pass accuracy was 85% to Villarreal 78. And what that tells me is like, you tried to do a lot, but not achieved enough in this game. You were trying to create something that just wasn't happening. And Villarreal did a really good job at closing in the spaces, kind of like what, Diego Simeone was trying to do for 90 minutes against it, but they weren't sitting. They weren't parking the bus. Yeah. They were just very smart in their counter. I thought it was a really good tactical game from Unai Emery. I agree. And you utilizing the pace of two players. Estupinian in the Champions League is playing as one of the best left. Hey, Michael, so listen, let me tell you something. Just very quickly, I'll, I'll let you carry on. But, uh, you know, when people ask me about Ecuador, Estupinian, my friend, is just one of like 10 oh. players that Ecuador have just like that. Oh, he carry on, is electrifying when i saw him play against manchester united in the group stages i thought who is this what yeah. get him eric ten hog get him we're gonna we're, we're gonna jump the gun a little bit maybe not go full united i just want to give that shout first on the transfer list <laughs> call me i've got good tips but with this Villarreal team they are what they are and estupinian's pace going forward and the pace of Dan Juma caused this Bayern Munich team problems. What didn't show up on the stat sheets for shots or goal chances created after they took the early lead for a Bayern team that's used to camping out in your half. What happens when a team has pace and counters, you have to run 70 to 80 yards to get the ball back again. Yeah. And you have players amazing. who are attack minded that don't want to do that on the goal. It was an attacking player who didn't want to defend and track his runner in Musiala. And yeah. then, 
Fernandez, or Fernandez didn't, or Hernandez, excuse me, didn't track, didn't shift over, and it's just a disjointed Munich defense. But it was today. lazy it in the first yeah. half, very lazy, and that's something that you don't say about Bayern Munich. I, yeah. I have no doubt that in the second leg, like they're gonna come out guns blazing. So Unai Emery has mm. to be smart about it. Who do you see, by the way, now? Now that the Villarreal traveling to to Munich with a, a goal lead uh, do you still see Villarreal holding on or do you think it just might be too much as uh kind of like what happened with Salzburg right because yeah. Salzburg led like they did better in the first half and then they got destroyed <laughs> in the second where Villarreal is different from a Salzburg Villarreal will be very content to see this go to penalty kicks <laughs> if, yeah. if it does if Munich score a goal they'll be they'll say hey we will sit in our six yard box let alone the top of our box and just do everything to take this to penalty kicks. What it what what makes me question Virial's chances is they had three, four, five chances to get the second goal. If they got the second goal, then I think they probably could have gotten the third goal because Bayern were playing that poorly for most of the match, and they had half chances. And it's just that lack of quality. I think very late on they had a golden opportunity where the counterattack was on Bayern, putting a lot of numbers forward, and you have players slicing shots into the stands and almost hitting the neighborhood Valencia Stadium, the Mestalla, with how poorly they were finishing. And those are the little details. When you play against the big boys, you have to put them to the sword because you bet your you-know-what that when they get a chance, they will punish you. And I think it's just too much time left on the board for the likes of Lewandowski, Thomas Mueller, and Bayern's fearsome attack, especially playing at home, to get back in this tie. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Uh, Villarreal really needed to... When I am, it's probably looking back at tape and thinking, we really could have come up with another goal in that one. It wouldn't just been one nothing. Those are Robert Lewandowski's numbers. Mm. Um, in all competitions, clearly he is one of the best number nines in the world, arguably. You know, the battle between Benzema and him, of course, is a, is, is a rightful one. But Ecuador, once again, Ecuador. See what I said there? Because I was thinking <laughs> of a stupid uh, Villarreal. Uh, did a pretty good job, but, uh, you know, at least nullifying the very best of uh, uh, Lewandowski and Thomas Muller, because usually mm. Muller, you know, can create a lot. 